One of the first things that new photographers tend to do when they get a new camera is prowl around the house looking for things to photograph. And it's only usually a matter of time till you end up in the garden photographing flowers. And sometimes those photographs don't seem to have the same impact that the flower had in real life. Why is that and what can we do about it? Now, I'm not going to be talking about exposure triangles. I'm not going to be talking about the physics of light. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that will give you the technicalities if that's what you want, and I perfectly understand that, if that's what you desire. I want you to experiment. I don't want to be bound by rules right at this stage. I want you to have fun. One of the best ways to learn is by mistakes. Now, when you make a living with photography, you can't afford mistakes. You need to get all those mistakes made very early on. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make some mistakes, but we're going to come up with an image that's worth having. Now the ordinary Joe will walk past a nice white fuchsia, let's say, and say, that's a nice white fuchsia. I think I'll take a picture of that nice white fuchsia. And so, there's their picture. Now, on Facebook, that's not going to stop anyone scrolling, is it? It's just a picture of a green thing with white dots on it. Now, a photographer will walk along. That's a nice white fuchsia. I think I'm going to photograph that nice white fuchsia. He will adjust his position, get in there, look for a composition, how it sits in the frame and how to focus on just the actual truth of that flower. It's a magnificent piece of natural art. So we don't want 500 fuchsias. We want just a handful. We want to focus on it. So we'll get down, long lens maybe, or a 50mm 1.8 plastic fantastic, and we'll shoot a picture that is edited in camera. And you've got a nice image. Some people will keep on scrolling. More will stop and say, beautiful nice image and then you get a photographer who's got way too much gear comes along and thinks that's a nice white fuchsia i'm going to photograph that nice white fuchsia and he throws a flash on the ground with diffusion on it and this is what he gets now that will stop people scrolling so what do you need to do this you need a cheap flash and then you want some diffusion and that will diffuse the light soften the light so we get rid of some of those harsh shadows now this is a cheap knockoff of something that was designed by a company called Magmod. Now the Magmod item is surprisingly expensive. Now this is a cheap Chinese knockoff, just cost a few bucks on eBay. Um, you can get grids, everything. Comes with this magnetic collar, slip it onto your flash. You've got grids, filter holders, and diffusion. Okay, so you've got a flash, but you haven't got any diffusion. An ordinary piece of white printer paper tape it over your flash there's your diffusion right what else do you need we're shooting this off camera flash by the way so we're not attached to the camera hot shoe so you need a receiver and a transmitter these two little babies are very cheap on ebay once again newer make sure they're compatible with your camera then you simply put the transmitter on your camera and the receiver on your flash and there you have it remote control now for the cheap camera I'm using a Canon 200D SL2 which is a superb little piece of equipment you can buy it used now very very cheaply totally recommended the lens I'm using is one of the kit options which is the EFS 55 to 250 millimeter uh, it's an STM lens superb silent focusing very accurate focus on it it's sharp this really is one of those outstanding lenses that just punches way above its weight but in order to get impact i want to control the ambient light now these were photographed on a bright sunny afternoon there was a lot of ambient light although the the future itself was in open shade but it's still an awful lot of light about now the first thing we have to think about is our settings if you don't have any software to post-process your image and edit your image then shoot JPEG that's absolutely fine because what we're trying to do anyway is get the shot in camera so that we don't have to post-process if we don't if we can't if we don't have those facilities so set your camera to whichever you want raw or JPEG or raw and JPEG is ideal that's all I use settings okay set your camera to manual set your ISO to the lowest possible ISO on your camera generally 100 some cameras is 2 and you want to set your aperture at around f8 I'll explain why in a minute 
if your shutter speed is at say hundreds, hundreds of a second, take a shot. Is that shot dark, light or well exposed or what is it? Well what we want is a dark frame. If it's not dark, turn the shutter speed up. Use a faster shutter speed. Let's double it, 200. There we go, 200 of a second, and still not dark enough. Because the whole, what we're trying to do here, kill the ambient light so that what light we introduce we can control. So in order to control the ambient light we need a dark frame or a near dark frame. So we turn the shutter speed up to 250th. Mm, still not perfectly dark but it's, it's, it's workable. So we go up to, I don't know, let's go 320, 320th of a second. Yeah, that's great. That's lovely. That's what we want. Now, with our standard speed light, this is going to cause a problem because cameras are built to work at a certain synchronization between the flash and the shutter. If you set the, set the shutter speed higher than the, the maximum sync shutter speed for your camera, which it will say in your menu, you will get a black line across part of the image. That's because because the timing of the light, the time it was lit for, isn't enough for that shutter speed. There is a way around that, but we'll go into that in a minute. The shutter speed you use is your maximum sync shutter speed. Take a shot, but it's not dark enough. We haven't killed all the ambient light. So what can we do? What we can do about that, there's two things we can do about that. One is use high speed sync, which is a flashlight speed light strobe, which is built to function at any shutter speed. What it does, it sends out pulses of light to cover the time the shutter is open and you get no black lines. Cheap speed lights, they're not gonna have high speed sync capability. So we're going to work within that. So what's the other thing that we can do to make that frame darker, to control the ambient light, is to close the aperture down a bit. So we're at f8. So I want it to start at f8 because f8 gives us a bit of leeway, a bit of wiggle room. So we go up to f11. Now we've got a nice dark frame. Not perfectly dark, but we, we're controlling that ambient light. We could go up to f16 and we will have a dark frame. Uh, F16, most lenses are starting to go soft through the physics of diffraction. I'm not going to go into that right now. So optimally, we want between F8 and F11 because that's going to give us a reasonable depth of field, you know, depth of focus, and um, a good quality sharp image from our lens because most lenses are very sharp by the time they get to F8, F11. Now what we have is a dark frame. Now we turn the flash on. Turn the flash on, full power, just what the hell. Whoa, it's way too bright. Okay, so we turn the flash power down. Turn it down to half. No, it's still too bright. Okay, so we turn the flash power down a little bit more. Yeah, we're getting there now. Quarter power, we've got a nice soft light. And that's it. There we have the image in camera. 